I'll take you through how to implement an effective maintenance program. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Zanelle. If you haven't subscribed, press that subscribe button below. Also remember to press that notification button, so the little bell, because every time I upload new content, you will then get a notification. So I usually like to share around engineering, around leadership and career development. And also depending on some of the questions that you guys ask, whether it's via email, via LinkedIn or in the comments section below. So a lot of the content is really there to serve you. So ultimately, if there's something that you're wanting to know more about, if you're wanting me to share in a bit more depth on a particular topic, feel free to send me direct messages or even to comment below so that we can also learn from one another. The whole aim of this was really, um, it started off when I was looking for information and content on the GCC and I struggled before I got my, my ticket. I struggled to find information and content online and YouTube is really growing at a substantial rate. It's the second biggest search engine after Google and I really felt that it was beneficial to share as much as possible to build build an army of soldiers of engineers or of leaders in any function whatsoever um, so that it's easier for you guys to get a hold of information. So one of the questions that has come up or one of the things that you're wanting to know more about is on maintenance strategies and how to apply an effective maintenance program. If you haven't checked out the previous video, I suggest you start with that because that's where I speak about the different types of maintenance. But just in quick summary, um, the three main different types, there are different types, but if you want to cluster them, you've got your predictive maintenance or your condition-based maintenance. You've got your breakdown maintenance or your corrective maintenance maintenance and you also have your time-based maintenance so this is your preventative time-based maintenance so today i'll talk you through how to develop a program where you know which type to apply and to um, execute for which type of scenario or situation so one of the best tools to use is your criticality analysis. So they speak about it often in Total Productive Maintenance, or TPM, and there are discussion points around it with Six Sigma. So there are maintenance programs or um, improvement programs that do touch on your criticality analysis. Some text in theory, and there are some publications that speak to life cycle engineering. So regardless of what you want to call it, a criticality analysis is really a risk assessment. It's a risk assessment of your entire system, of your equipment, all the way down to components level depending on the criticality of your um, organization or how your plant is set out or how your equipment or machinery is laid out i do advise that you go down analyze your risks all the way down to component level so typical example you've got your location you've got your plant you've got a division or a department you've got your entire line or your system this comprises of different pieces of machines that are interconnected by say conveying systems you go down to machine level but break down your machine to subsections or sub assemblies and break down your sub assemblies even further to the individual components so a shaft on its own a bearing on its own a belt on its own it is very time consuming so you will need to number one invest in the time and the resource and also understand what the ultimate benefit is. You'll weigh up your benefit cost ratio and see whether that investment in time and people is worth what you will get out of it. If you ask me, it's always worth it to start out with a proper plan, to start out with a proper risk assessment for you to have an effective maintenance program so you don't find yourself in a situation where you've got equipment and machines breaking down every single day or month or whatnot. So criticality analysis looks at a combination of different requirements. Um, some industry use a six by six matrix so you know with the risk assessment you'll look at your severity and your probability and you weigh up on your six by six with one being the least severe and the least probable and six being your highest severity and your highest probability also do your risk assessment according to different requirements and criteria so is there a big safety risk when that piece of equipment breaks down is there a big quality risk so does it produce quality defective products is there a big cost impact depending on having your machine down for a certain period of time? Are you losing so much in your cost? Do you have people that are standing there idle because you're not producing because of that cost impact? Do you have or can you source those spares locally or is there a long lead time? Because this will also speak to your main time to repair the breakdown. So is there a long lead time in repairing your breakdown? Is this piece of equipment or your spare coming all the way from Germany? If that's the case, your lead time will be longer and your mean time to repair will be longer, which is something you want to avoid in a maintenance in a maintenance program or in any KPI for your maintenance system. Or is it something that can be quickly fabricated in-house or is this very easily obtainable down the road from your supplier who's around the corner? 
Those are a combination of things that you will look at when you're considering what the criticality is. What you'll do is also apply a simple scoring matrix with one being the least severe and five or six being your highest severity. And that way you put a ranking and a scoring matrix against each criteria. For so example, with your servo motor, will your servo motor, when it breaks down, does it stop the entire system? When it breaks down, does it cause or expose individuals to a safety risk? When it breaks down, does it generate quality defective materials? When it breaks down, can you easily obtain one down the road or locally, or do you need to bring it in from an international service provider or supplier? After you've weighed up your entire system, the different pieces of equipment, it'll give you a scoring and you can have a range between a certain number. So you can have your range, which is your green, amber, red, or your A, 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 B, and C, and class your pieces of equipment on the criticality that way you know and rule of thumb with the c critical piece of equipment you know that you can leave it to fail so i mentioned i made a joke about light bulbs so if you've got a light bulb that is under a c critical piece of equipment you can have a breakdown or corrective maintenance strategy to apply to that light bulb so ultimately you'll run into failure once it's failed it's a quick replace and you carry on but if you've got a specialist designed orifice or a low pump that you need to get from the states or one that you're needing to source in from Europe and you're say in Africa and it takes a long lead time, then you know that that needs to be on somewhat of a condition-based or preventative maintenance program. Ultimately, what you're wanting to understand is the life cycle of a piece of equipment, how much it costs you, is it a safety risk to individuals, does it create quality defects for your organization, and is it something that you're really wanting to invest in so that you don't have a bigger impact later on. The best way to do a criticality analysis is to have a cross-functional team. So you don't only want your maintenance um, team members or your engineers working on this alone. You want members from operations, you want members from quality, from safety, um, from logistics or your buying department and stores. So you want them all part of the process so that the assessment and analysis can be unbiased and you get the different standpoints and viewpoints from all functions and all departments. You're also likely to wanting to have finance involved so that they can help you with your cost benefit ratio to see that the cost that you're looking to invest in whatever strategy that you're looking to employ really does give you the right benefit ultimately for your entire organization. You're the SME and expert in your organization and with the maintenance that might be required for your different types of scenarios and also for, for the different industries that you're working in. But it is worth taking a step back, really looking at your plant end to end and seeing whether you've got the right maintenance strategy to give you success. You know what, ultimately it also depends on the skill sets that you've got in your team. It might be a piece of stainless steel that's been fabricated to execute a function but your tolerances and how it's installed and what to look out for and the experience and how to maintain that piece of equipment will come in and how you're building the capability how you're investing in the individuals and the people to maintain that piece of equipment leaving it dirty having uh, debris and dust and grime growing all over it or not having your oil changes as frequently as you want them to be or not tightening when you're needing to tighten due to the oscillations and the running of the machinery you will experience forced deterioration and a life cycle that is much shorter than what it's meant to be. You're wanting to ensure you've got the right strategies to extend the lifespan or the life cycle of your piece of equipment. Comment below on whether you found this useful and if you've applied a criticality analysis when you implemented your maintenance strategy. I'm keen to hear from you guys and also to hear some of your views so I can also take it back and learn from what you guys have experienced in your different industries as well. If you haven't liked this video, press that like button below and remember to live your best life, learn as you grow and lead for change. Shout.